We're looking at the Wall of Sound plugin from Two Notes Audio Engineering. Hello everyone, Brendan here, and welcome to Pawn Shop to Jaw Drop. Today I've got a little bit of a longer video for you, but I hope it'll be informative and enjoyable. We're looking at the Wall of Sound plugin from Two Notes Audio Engineering. This is a tool that allows you to run your guitar recordings through a digitally emulated speaker cabinet using impulse response technology. Well, I'll tell you, your recorded guitar sound is usually a product of seven different components. First off, you have your guitar. Next up, you have whatever comes after your guitar. Usually that's pedals. The next thing will be the preamp section of your guitar amp. Next up is whatever's in the effects loop of your guitar amp. A lot of times that's a delay pedal or a reverb unit. Next up, you have your guitar amp's power section. This is where the big tubes reside. <laughs> then your signal goes to a guitar speaker cabinet and finally into a microphone. Now, if you're recording at home and you can't make a lot of noise, you can eliminate two of these components to be a lot quieter. One of those is the guitar speaker cabinet. The other is the microphone. You can do that with a few different direct recording solutions. Probably the best thing would be to get a hold of something like this Two Notes Torpedo Captor, which is a load box. This allows you to plug the speaker output of your amp right into the back of it, and then you get a direct out that has your whole amp sound, including the power section, and you can plug that right into your recording interface. Another method would be to use some kind of a modeler, like this pod, for instance. Be advised if you're using a pod, you'll need to disable the internal speaker emulation, and that's done with a switch right here between the two output jacks. On any other kind of guitar modeler, you'll just have to refer to your manual to discover what you need to do to disable the onboard speaker emulation, but that shouldn't be too tough. Anyway, once you get your guitar going into your interface, then you can start using the power of the Wall of Sound plugin by Two Notes Audio Engineering. So let's head to the computer and check that out. Now, let me say off the bat that I'm using Logic Pro X. However, what you see here will be useful to you in whatever your digital audio workstation is, whether that's Pro Tools or Studio One or Cubase or whatever. So please don't think that this is Logic Pro X specific. If I open up my mixer, you can see that I have four guitar tracks set up. I've got guitar left, guitar right, guitar mid left, guitar mid right, and then all of that goes through a guitar bus. Now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use one of these tracks. So I'm gonna take guitar left and I'm gonna mono that up. That'll be the guitar track that we're using today. Once all this is bussed down through the guitar bus, it goes out to our stereo out. Let's get started by opening up the Torpedo Wall of Sound plugin. I'm gonna open this up as a mono instance. And there it is. Now, the first thing you might notice is that maybe you're not seeing this interface. You may be seeing something that looks like this. This is the arcade interface, and we'll be covering that in a subsequent video. Today, I wanna to look at the other interface, and to get back to that, or to get to it if you have not already been there, is just to click on this button that says Simulation. And you'll see, as you hover over it, this bubble that says Convert to Simulation Preset. So we'll click that. Now first, over on the right side, we have a menu. And then we have these three buttons, which are extraordinarily useful. Depending on the size of your screen, you may need to make this plug-in window larger or smaller. So if we hit the small button, you can see the plug-in window 
reduces in size greatly. If we hit the medium size, we can see it as it was before. And then extra large gets really big. Unfortunately, my monitor is actually running at full 1080p HD, but it is still not large enough to accommodate the extra large setting. So we're gonna stick with the medium setting and we're gonna go right to the input. Now, once you get some guitar going through this, you'll actually see here that you can manage your signal to noise ratio by increasing this or decreasing this using this knob. I'm gonna set it at zero. The power amp section, which we'll discuss at the end, allows you to adjust the sound as it would be affected by the power amp section of a guitar amplifier. This is the section that we really want to focus on, and this is where we can choose our guitar cabinet. Now, in this upper section, you can see that you can choose what speaker emulations are available to you. So both guitar and bass are available. You have what is stored on your computer, and what's available online. Now, most of what is available online is gonna be speaker emulations that have not yet been purchased. So if I go to this box and I open up a list of guitar cabinets, you can see, for instance, this Brit 30th has a little shopping cart next to it. That means that if I want to use this speaker emulation, I'm going to have to purchase it. So in order to keep those from being visible, we can just click this online button. Now with that turned off, if we do the same thing, we can see only the speaker emulations that I have installed on this computer. Now, because I own a Two Notes product, I was actually awarded a license to many of their speaker emulations and therefore I have some installed here that you won't find in the free to download version of Wall of Sound. However, this demonstration will still show you how to use these. And at first we're gonna be using this Brit Vint C, which is, as far as I know, a speaker emulation that comes with the free download of the plugin. Now, if you look at this window, you can see this speaker cabinet. That is the guitar speaker emulation that we've selected, and then we have this microphone. With these knobs, we can actually adjust the distance of the microphone from the speaker. With the center knob, we can actually adjust its orientation, whether it be facing the center of the speaker or the outside of the speaker. If you're new to miking up speaker cabinets, it's worthwhile to know that when you have the mic pointed directly at the center of the speaker, you will retain much more high frequency and get a much brighter sound than you will if the microphone is not pointed directly at the center of the speaker. Now, there are some other controls here that you can set to taste. These, I find, are best set at 0%. However, you can experiment with them as you wish. The dry and wet control, however, is very important. This actually blends in the speaker emulation. So when it is set to 100% wet, you are getting the speaker simulation. When you set it to 0% wet, you are getting no speaker simulation. Therefore, since the whole point of this is to introduce a speaker simulation into your guitar recording, my suggestion is to set this at 100% wet. And let's get to work. We have two sounds here on the bottom that we're going to blend together. If you click on either one, it is highlighted in red, and we then know that that is what we're working on. So I'm going to select the one on the left, and I am going to select a cabinet. You can select different speaker emulations, and you can see the speaker cabinet changes as you change that. So once again, we're going to go back to the Brit Vent C. Once again, we are working with this sound. Typically, I like to start with a Dyn 57 microphone. Presumably, that is a model of a Shure SM57, which is a very commonly used guitar recording microphone and has appeared on countless hit records and is, to this day, a mainstay of guitar recording. Now, if we open this box up, you can see we have 
a selection of microphones. I'm not sure what Nightfall is. CND87. I assume this is a model of a Neumann U87. Once again, very popular microphone for recording guitar cabinets. A RBN121, I'm assuming that stands for Ribbon 121. More than likely, this is a model of a Royer R121 microphone. Moving on, we have a Dyne 421. That is more than likely a model of a Dynamic Sennheiser 421 microphone. But here we are back at the Dyne 57, and that's what we're going to stick with. So typically what I do is I run a 57 slightly off center. So I'm going to dial up this center knob to about oh, a little less than 11 o'clock, I'd say. And we're going to make sure our dry wet is set at 100%. Moving on, I'm going to go over to our other sound. Now we can select another cabinet, if we'd like. For instance, a Brit 60A. I'm assuming that is a model of a Marshall 1960 cabinet. We have some other options, but for this example, we're just gonna stick to Brit Vent C. This time, however, we're going to select a different mic. We are now going to use the Dyne 421. As stated, I believe that is a model of a Sennheiser 421 dynamic microphone. And in this case, we're going to make sure that it is right on center. Now, going back to our left sound, I'm going to utilize this EQ. And I am going to set the low setting, which is a high pass filter, to 99 hertz. Going back to our right sound, I'm going to do the same thing. That's going to give us a really tight sound without an abundance of low, low end. This will give our kick drum and our bass guitar some room to breathe. Now I'm not going to make any adjustments to the reverb right now. What I'm going to do right now is record a little bit of guitar. So let's move this over to the small interface and move it out of the way so we can record some guitar. Disabling the record mode on this track. Now we can see the real power of this tool. If I go ahead and play back what I just recorded. Let me go ahead and make this large again. Here we go. Now again, if I play this, you can see there's meter on the input. Now to maximize the sound of the Wall of Sound plugin, we're going to want to increase this so we're peaking right about minus three. That looks pretty good. Then we're going to adjust our output because you can see that my channel is now overloading. I'm getting a good 1.5 dB of signal over the ceiling of what the DAW is capable of. So we're gonna dial this back. We're gonna start with a reduction of about 3 dB and see where we end up. <laughs> Now that's sounding pretty good. Here's what's important to know about where we are now. If I decided that I wanted to change my speaker cabinet to the Brit 1960A, for instance, and we'll do that with both cabinets. Now our microphones have changed and we'll go ahead and Get those back where they need to be. Here we are now with a different cabinet. Now the reason it's important to 
understand very distinctly what I just showed you is that this gives you enormous flexibility with your recordings. When you set this up with a certain sound and then you record your guitar sound, it doesn't commit any of what we've set up here to the recording. It can be changed again after the fact. So if we now go back to our Brit Vint C setting and our 421 setting, and then on this side, we go back to our Brent Vint C cabinet and our 50, our dynamic 57 mic. Now we're back to where we were. So you can see that once you get farther along in your mix, you might actually decide that your guitar sound is not entirely what you want. You might decide that you want to change to a different speaker cabinet. You might decide that you want to make a change in your microphone choice. You might decide that you want to change the position of your microphone. You might decide that you want to change this EQ setting. It just really is infinitely flexible once you get into your mix. In the old days, when we recorded a guitar sound with microphones, we were stuck with that. If we wanted to change something, we had to record it again. So you can see how useful this is. Now, the only thing I can say about that is it's very important that you don't go down a rabbit hole once you start your mix process. I'm a very firm believer in getting the sounds you want at first. So I really think this is a great tool for doing that. However, if a disaster occurs and something sounds terrible, once you get into the mix stage, you can change it. So I think that's a wonderful safety net that is offered by this tool. Now, we're gonna talk about this reverb section. What this does is it gives you a room-based reverb. If we look again in the main section, we can see this room that is surrounding our virtual speaker cabinet, which represents our speaker emulation. We can change that room with this box right here. There's Studio B. Lots of hard surfaces, very similar to a drum room that you would find in a very high-end studio. Basement is pretty much what you'd expect. Once again, lots of hard surfaces, but concrete instead of wood this time. That has a unique sound. Loft. Hall A. This is very much a live music environment. Hall B. The crypt and cathedral and finally a custom setting which you can set up using these knobs right here so let's see what some of these do let's go to crypt and we're going to turn up our wet setting to about 60% and see what this reverb sounds like. The sound of the room will be introduced into our sound. So you can see we have a really pleasant sounding room reverb. That might be a little much for your recording, but again, we're just listening to these in the interest of demonstration. Here's the cathedral. That's a reverb with a very long tail. Studio A is where we were. It's a very short reverb with pretty much only early reflections. Studio B. Again, only early reflections, but yet harsher, more immediate early reflections. So you can see that this gives you some options to give an ambience to your sound that might be very musical. And you can see that with a lower setting, it actually can be very musical. Of course, once you get into your mix, you're going to be adding reverb to 
various elements of your mix. And uh, those, I'm sure, will take precedence over the wall of sound reverb setting. But it's there if you need it. And I think you'll find that used sparingly, it can be quite useful. It's important to know that I recorded these guitar sounds with a Line 6 pod. In using that Line 6 pod, I have the built-in speaker simulations of the pod turned off. And I'm introducing the sound of speaker emulation just with the Wall of Sound plugin. The pod is great because it simulates a myriad of fantastic vintage classic amplifiers. However, you might want to use something like a distortion pedal instead of a guitar amp or instead of a pod or some other modeling tool. Let's say you have a full tone OCD, for instance, that would be the full tone obsessive compulsive drive. You could plug that right into your audio interface and now turn on this power amp section and you can introduce the sound of a tube guitar power amp you can see we have a 6L6 power section, an EL34 power section. These are uh, power tube complements, by the way. There's an EL84 power tube complement power section, KT88, 6L6, EL34, EL84, KT88 again. Now, I'm not really going to dwell on this, but if you have a pedal that you love the sound of, the only way that you could have recorded that in the past was to plug it into a guitar amp, mic it up, and record it traditionally. This would have introduced a great number of variables that would have brought you eventually to a sound that may not have been anything like what you were expecting. In this case, the Wall of Sound plugin has your back. You can introduce a power section and a speaker emulation to your favorite pedal and get a sound that you think is fantastic without any muss or any fuss. And I just think that is a fantastic feature. Now finally, let's look at one more thing. We've created a sound that we like really well, and we'd like to come back to this at a later date. All we have to do is hit the save button. A dialog will appear, allowing us to save a preset. Let's call this Vint C Fave. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now, if we open up another instance, of the same plugin on another channel, we can call up that preset. And we're ready to go. Now I would be remiss if I did not mention one more thing. You have these two speaker emulations and two microphone emulations set up to create the sound that you love. You can add to this by creating another row with this add button. You could set up another cabinet and another microphone on both of these and then that would be mixed in. You would mix all four of these with the volume knobs present here. Now if you decide that that's too much, which it probably is, you can just hit this DEL button and get rid of that and you're back to your original sound. Now I tell you about this feature with some trepidation because utilizing it you run the risk of muddying up your sound and ending up with something that's very similar to a poorly recorded guitar amp that was recorded in the real world. The whole point of this Wall of Sound plugin is to make the process of recording guitars easier. So, at least in the beginning, I would encourage you to just stick to one cabinet with one mic and the same cabinet with a different mic and then blend those together to taste. As I stated earlier, in a subsequent video, we'll be looking at the arcade mode, which once again looks like this. But for now, that's the Wall of Sound plugin. Okay, so now you've seen a detailed walkthrough of the plugin. Please check back soon because I'm doing a series of videos about how to use this plugin both with a load box, as we discussed before, and with a modeler, as we discussed before. And then I'm gonna make another video where I show you how to do some really wacky stuff with it. I made this video first because I thought that it would be a nice primer for those upcoming videos. I thought if you had seen the plugin whenever I referred to it, you might have an easier time knowing what in the heck I'm talking about. No matter what, I really appreciate you tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Well, friends, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. 
You can head over to pawnshop.jawdrop.com for even more content. But while you're here, here's another video you might like. This is Brendan saying we'll see you next time on... Punch up the jaw drop.